Hello everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, your look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. The city and KCPD invite you to attend an open house for the new Leon Jordan Mercer campus. It's the new home of the East Patrol Division Police Station and the Regional Crime Lab. The event takes place December 1st. The dedication and ribbon cutting ceremonies start at 3.30 p.m. You can tour the facility before or after the ceremony anytime from 1 to 3 or 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. The $74 million project is located at 27th and Prospect Avenue. It was funded by the voter-approved public safety tax. The project replaces the East Patrol Division Station and the Regional Crime Lab. City agencies and community groups will also be present at that event to provide information about projects and services. Please join us. Kansas City, Missouri was recently recognized as one of eight winners of the 2015 Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Culture of Health Prize. The prize celebrates the progress we've made to ensure good health throughout our city. Kansas City community groups will receive cash prizes totaling $25,000. Well, Kansas City is on a roll. Um, this Culture of Health Prize, there are only uh, out of 3,000 local and tribal health departments in the country. There are only four of us that have been nationally accredited and have won this prize. So four out of over 3,000, so we're really pleased. Uh, but just as the Royals are already planning for the next season, we're doing the same thing. Uh, we know we have a long way still to go, and everybody's coming together, and we're updating our plan, and uh, it's going to be exciting. Kansas City was recognized for leveraging its unique strengths and rallying community partners around a shared vision of health. That includes the Health Department's Aim for Peace initiative. Aim for Peace uses health workers to hit the streets to interrupt violence. A 70% reduction in homicides in targeted intervention zones and a 24% reduction across the city can be attributed to those efforts. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with the Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities. Throughout the year, City Facilities host a variety of exciting and unique events for all interests that add to the Kansas City experience. And this month will not disappoint. Mark your calendar for three great concerts coming to Municipal's Arena and Music Hall this month. For a night of rhythm and blues, the seven-time Grammy winner Gladys Knight will perform at the Music Hall on November 14th, touring with the OJs, who have achieved 10 gold albums, 9 platinum, and 10 number one hits. Thanks to their fans, the love train is still going strong. On November 20th, singer-songwriter Jackson Brown brings the Jackson Brown and Band's 2015 U.S. tour to the Municipal Arena to promote his new album, Standing in the Breach. Tour details are available at jacksonbrown.com. On November 23rd, the Festival of Praise National Tour returns to Municipal Arena. This tour was an enormous success last year and is bigger and better than ever with award-winning artists Fred Hammond, Donnie McClurkin, and Kim Burrell. And finally, start off your December with Dirty Dancing the Musical, performed live at the Music Hall from December 8th through 13th. The classic story about how Baby and Johnny came together in what will be the most challenging and triumphant summer of their lives. Featuring the hit songs, Hungry Eyes, Hey Baby, and I've Had the Time of My Life. Tickets for these shows are available through Ticketmaster.com or at the Municipal Box Office. These are just a few of the many events that Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities offers our community. To learn about even more events, visit kcconvention.com and click on the events calendar or call 816-513-5000. The KC Streetcar moves with normal traffic. So when you're driving, be patient. Share the road. Be nice. Park inside the white line. And mind your doors. Your car will thank you. Be smart, be safe, be ready. Ride KC.
World Toilet Day is November 19th, but how much thought do you give to one of the most used fixtures in your home? During our lifetime, we spend an estimated 9,000 hours on the toilet. That's one full year. And U.S. homeowners spend a lot of money making their throne room something to brag about. You can get solid gold toilets. You can get gold overlaid porcelain toilets. You can get uh, stainless steel toilets. Bruce Wayne Harden is a master plumber. He's worked in bathrooms all his life. Uh, the newer toilets are considered to be uh, siphon jet flush. So what that means is that we used to see the little trap in the back of the toilet uh, and the little swirly uh, uh, water would swirl from the little holes around the inside of the lip of the toilet. Uh, they're a siphon jet flush now. America flushes an estimated 200,000 trees worth of toilet paper every year. And that's not all. Uh, this is our collection of golf balls that we get here at this facility. This is Casey Waters' Blue River Wastewater Treatment Plant. It's where the contents of your toilet go after you flush. Sean O'Kelly is plant engineer. There, the main thing about a toilet is it's not a trash can and no plastic should ever go down the toilet, nor should rags, nor the new fancy uh, wet wipes, which are definitely flushable, but they don't break down, they're not treatable. All of that gets caught here in these bar screens. It's part of Casey Waters' treatment process to return wastewater to the Missouri River cleaner than when we took it out. Now, think about life without indoor plumbing. There are two and a half billion people on the planet without access to improved sanitation. Poor sanitation, water, and hygiene lead to about 700,000 premature deaths each year. It's, uh, it's key to uh, the health, uh, you know, um, the public health. On World Toilet Day, Take a moment to appreciate the difference that easily accessible porcelain bowl makes in your life and consider those who don't have access to the same level of sanitation. And remember, don't flush anything other than number one, number two, or toilet paper. Um, everybody in their bathroom has a trash can right next to their toilet. So when you have a piece of plastic in your hand, a uh, condom, plastic applicator, uh, rag, you have a decision to make. Do you put it in the toilet or do you put it in the trash can? The trash can takes it to the landfill. The toilet, unbeknownst to you, goes to the ocean. Artwork is just one of the many ways the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department, in partnership with others, is working to prevent crime. Seven murals have been painted on door-sized pieces of wood by local artists as part of an urban canvas KC that will be placed on vacant and abandoned homes in the city. The artwork was created with the help of dozens of young people who not only received hands-on art education, but also provided the inspiration for the canvases. The project is part of Casey Nova's Burn Grant area of operation, which includes the area along the Prospect Corridor from 25th Street to 39th Street and Paseo to Indiana. Garrick Haynes explains how the artwork will be used. With the artwork, we're going to, uh, it's going to, it's door size pieces. So on the abandoned properties, they're going to take the artwork and they're going to seal up the residence or the, the, um, the properties. They're going to seal the doors with this artwork behind me. 50 youngsters were placed with mentors for five weeks and were instructed on art techniques to complete the seven murals. The focus was also on educating the young artists on how to become professional artists and how to submit their work to art museums and competitions. Artist Amanda Hashagen describes the piece she worked on. How it kind of started was that um, we were talking about condemned houses here in the city and whether we had them in our neighborhood or not and what were some of the thoughts that, that came to our mind as we walked by those houses. And we came to talking about who lived in that house before it was condemned and why perhaps they weren't able to live there anymore. Um, so that was one of the things that kind of got us starting and talking about, you know, 
know, uh, inequality, ins institutionalized inequality. Um, we also talked about um, gun violence, um, not only, you know, within our community, but also police violence and how gun violence is ending many young men's and women's chance for education. So the idea is, um, this artist actually right here came up with this idea of equality with, with uh, bullet holes in it. And so everywhere that, that it's dripping, it's taking the color out. <clears throat> Uh, the vi so the violence is taking the color and the vibrancy out of our city. And so the people down here represent all people, all shapes, all sizes, ages, colors, races. Um, and the people working together is what brings the color back into our community, the vibrancy. And so there's just kind of this, um, you know, constant struggle. And it, hopefully, hopefully this will serve as a reminder for people to work together, yeah. The mentors identified two young artists who will receive scholarships to attend workshops at the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art. The project is part of the Prospect Community Corridor Safety Program. The seven neighborhood associations in that designated area will select a vacant house to receive an artist's treatment on its boarded up doors and windows. Sergeant Haynes explains the connection between abandoned homes and crime. It helps to uh, deter crime from the abandoned properties. There's a lot of crime that goes on um, at abandoned properties, drug use, sometimes assaults, um, and just sometimes even just squatting. But people go inside and, and kind of make a home out of these abandoned properties. Uh, even if the abandoned property's got a, um, if it's got a board on it, the people will tear, tear the board down and then they'll go inside the residence. So what, we wanna, what we're doing with this is we're bringing attention to these properties so that uh, um, it, it deters the people from wanting to even go to these abandoned properties because there's a lot of people looking at them. KC Nova, in partnership with local initiative Support Corporation, Arts Tech, Kansas City Parks and Recreation, Vine Street Studios, and the Community Response Team, started Urban Canvas KC in July of 2015. Stay tuned for addresses where the works will be unveiled. I'm Sergeant Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. The city's fall curbside leaf and brush pickup continues for residents in the north zone November 30th. The south zone continues on December 7th and the central zone continues December 14th. Residents may leave up to 20 bags or bundles of leaves and brush on their curb on their regular trash pickup day. Residents may also use the city's drop-off sites which are open through January. Check our website at kcmo.gov and search leaves for locations, times, and drop-off fees. In observance of the upcoming Thanksgiving Day holiday, city offices and the 311 Center will be closed on Thursday, November 26th and Friday, November 27th. Curbside trash and recycling collection for residents who usually have Thursday or Friday service will be delayed one day for the rest of that week. To view this program again or other Channel 2 videos, go to kcmo.gov and search Channel 2. That page has a link to our YouTube channel and a Channel 2 program guide. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week and a great Thanksgiving.